Time is precious. We're back. And that's the important thing. Wait, what does it mean by procedural? Um, hold on. Uh, how do I shut this stupid thing down? Huntsman, my beloved. Where do I even begin with this monstrosity? Well, I guess let's just start with stats. Uh, the Huntsman is... Um, hmm. KJ? I, I think the graphics messed up. Where are the stats? No, there aren't any. What? There aren't any stats. We mean there aren't any stats. I mean there aren't any stats. What, like none? Zero. Cool. The Huntsman is an unlockable sniper primary with no stats that, despite that, is also completely different from the stock rifle. You hold down left click to draw an arrow and begin charging up, and release it to fire. I, look, are, are you sure that we can't just, like, add stats? Nope. What are you even gonna add? There's nothing. The more you charge it, the straighter the arrow flies, and the more damage it does. Mama, take them all, take them. Uh... Also, if you hold it for too long, then the sniper becomes more jittery than- Look at this! There is no way I- It's all coming together! Bingo! Huh? Hey, you get, get out of here! You don't interrupt the genius at work! All right, great. You happy? Yes! Yes, I am! God, this is stupid! I'm rating the Huntsman one fruit shoot out of five and it doesn't even hit the apple. It hits the fucking bounding box and counts as a headshot. Looking at this thing closer, the mechanism being click and release, the conditional projectile deviation, it's a lot less like the sniper rifle and more like the beggar's bazooka. And also like the beggar's bazooka, this thing is really fucking weird. Let's just say that the Huntsman embodies that whole failing upwards gimmick that we covered in the beggar's video almost perfectly. The main thing making this such a strange item is the fact that it's not a hitscan weapon like every other sniper primary. It fires projectiles like a rocket launcher or a flare gun. Okay, so why does that even matter? Well, it means the game can't tell whether or not you hit just by checking to see if you clicked on an enemy. Enemy gamer. There's travel time involved, and it has to determine whether or not you hit based on if the projectile hitbox hits the enemy gamer's hitbox, or sometimes their bounding box. And those boxes are kind of infamous for being, um, well, they're they're a little off. Basically, the way that it works is that the projectile hitbox collides with the player hitbox registers as a hit, and if it's a hit hitbox, then it also registers as a headshot. But if the projectile only collides with the bounding box, which is the thing that checks if your character is hitting a wall or a tree or some shit, then the arrow teleports forward with it, and then teleports again to the first player hitbox inside of that bounding box. Basically, this means that if the hit hitbox is the closest thing to the point where your arrow hit the bounding box, then it just teleports where it counts as a headshot because this game is awesome. <sighs> Look, I'm no scientist. There were probably like 27 mistakes in that explanation alone. But what I do know is that all of this and how it relates to the Huntsman can be summarized in two words. Weaponized jack. Honestly, that's it. That's the main theme right there. How should you, a real Manco mercenary, use the Huntsman? Embrace the jank. Weaponize it. There you go. Look, look at this. The spy's trying to get away with the intel, so I gun him down with the SMG, do a quick check to see if anybody else is here. Spy decloaks behind me, so I hit him with a quick body shot. And I... Mm. Okay, I hit him with a quick headshot, apparently. In this clip, our NG's getting sapped, and the scout's gonna run in and try and destroy the sentry, so I'm just gonna shoot off a couple arrows to deter him from doing it again. Uh, he's gonna peek again. Oh. Mm. Here's a clip where I'm just gonna walk back to spawn after firing off almost all my arrows, and I see the spy decloak, and I just... I, I, cool. Like, I, bro's even looking at the arrow, like, how the fuck did that hit me? I... Come on, man. Oi! You stay right there, punk. Oops. Ooh. Right between the eyes. What? And yeah, these are all janky and funny, but to be fair, all of these clips are ones that you could do just as easily with the rifle, maybe even easier. Like, okay, let's just put myself in that same situation with the rifle, and you would just, like, 
yeah. It's really hard to escape the shadow of such an oppressive weapon type, especially if what you're trying to escape with is as gimmicky as playing melee with a set of DK bongos. But okay, yeah, sure, not every kill is a stupid gimmick. Like, look at this. I see this guy, predict when he's gonna double jump, carefully aim a shot, and then... Okay, so maybe some kills are on people that you didn't mean to shoot. Maybe it's more than just some. Dead center! Yeah, okay, who am I kidding? The Huntsman racks up so many accidental kills that it's basically just a slot machine. Let's just say that there's a reason people call this thing the Luxman. Welcome back to a brand new game show exclusive to Man's Guide. It's called, Did He Mean To Kill That Guy? The rules are simple. I show you a clip of either me or KJ using the Huntsman, and you tell me if you think we meant to do that. Just, um, uh, ignore that part. Fucking way. <laughs> Final chance to get your answers in. Are you ready to see how you did? All right, drum roll, please. No, of course we didn't mean to kill any of those people. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching the latest and only episode of Did He Mean to Kill That Guy? It's the only episode because it's uh, maybe a little too easy. Actually, now that I think about it, why not just. Hang on. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Now that I think about it, why not just shoot without actually seeing someone? Right? I mean, there's always a chance that a sniper's gonna peek through that one window on battlements after I shoot this arrow. Yeah, blind fires work too, by the way. In this clip, they just capped first and a spawn wave just came in, so I'm gonna jump in front of here and fire off an arrow, and there you go. I think I know roughly when their next push is gonna be, so I'll just peek out here and fire an arrow in this general direction, and yeah, wow, this game's easy. In this clip, my partner got auto bounced, and I don't even need to narrate this, just listen to the reaction. What? That, huh? <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, I wasn't aiming for you at all. <laughs> I shot an arrow in the general direction of red team. By its very nature, a hitscan weapon can't get these blind fire kills, so I don't know, you tend to get them a lot with the Huntsman, so maybe that'll help to catch up to the... Hmm. Well, at least the Huntsman excels at close range, not having a scope and still being able to headshot actually helps out a lot here and lets you be far more aggressive. Like, look, I peeked this corner that I have absolutely no business peeking, and let's be honest, I should probably die with nothing to show for it in this situation, but that's okay, I'm using the Huntsman. Could you do that with a stock rifle? Well, yeah, I guess you could, but, but what about this? In this clip, I'm waiting for somebody who took the intel and this scout rushes me from the side, so I just flick up quickly and hit him in the head. If I was in this situation with a stock rifle, I wouldn't have been able to charge up a shot so that... Okay, I guess you could just quick scope. Okay, but in this clip, I'm walking back to the front lines and hear a spy decloak behind me, so I turn around and just hit him in the head really quickly. I... Well, okay, I guess I, I wouldn't have been zoomed in to begin with the rifle, so I guess you could also do that with stock. Okay, but you know what the rifle can't do? Stab, stab, stab. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's right, the Huntsman's got the ultimate form of disrespect, a taunt kill. You remember the old saying about how Sniper can do everything Spy does except better? That applies to backstabs too, you don't even need to be behind them. And I know, I hear you saying taunt kills, why does that even matter? Why bother getting into melee range to kill someone with a severe delay when you could just use the rifle and... And yeah, sure, I get it, it's slow, it's short range, it's comically impractical, all things that are antithetical to Sniper's core design. This really is just nerfing yourself for the funny, but let me just ask you a question. Can your stock rifle do this? Stab, 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 yeah, I didn't think so. Oi, just a heads up, man. Looks like this thing got patched out a while ago. Oh, uh, what? Wait, that's not in the patch notes anywhere. It was like a stealth fix? Yeah, it was never documented. You can still taunt while stunned, but for some reason, the staring cottage just stops after the first stun. Anyway, we just replaced the clip with SFM. Man, that's so fucking stupid. I can't have shit in this game. Okay, but the, the Huntsman's got funny ragdolls, though. Like, look, look at this funny ragdoll. Isn't that wacky? Huh? But the stock rifle can't do that. Nope. No. No. That wasn't funny. No. I... <laughs> oh, but the Huntsman pins the ragdolls to the wall. Look at how funny that is. That makes using it worth it. Right? You failed. 
Look, there's really no getting around it. Clearly anything the Huntsman can do, the rifle can do it better. And anywhere the Huntsman even comes close, it's mostly just luck. Here's a clip, and yeah, it looks cool, but what would happen if we had the rifle? Boom, same thing. Here's a rifle clip. Wow, I want a sniper duel. Cool. Now what happens if we go into this situation with Huntsman? Whoa, shocker, I died. Pocketed demo catches me off guard, and that's fine. I'm able to get the kill and force the medic to retreat, but obviously it would have been a lot easier if I had had the rifle. See, I click on his head and... Oh. Okay, well, that, that must have just been a fluke, right? In that one specific situation, the Huntsman did something that the rifle couldn't. But it would never happen anywhere else, right? Like in this clip, the Demo Knight charges me and I shoot him in the head and taunt because, ha ha, funny, but you give me the rifle in this situation and I would... Hmm. Okay, maybe it's just Demo Man? Like, I, okay, here's a clip where I kill a heavy. I, um, walking around all stupid and aggressive and I just wait for him to rev up and shoot him in the head. So then let's rewind, give myself the rifle, and then... Huh. Wait. Okay, I can't believe I'm saying this, but does the Huntsman take skill? Uh, so is there a graphic or... KJ? Hmm? Oh, uh... Is, is that actually what we're using? No, we're not, we're not ready for this part. Go buy some time. Oh, uh, okay. We'll be right back after a quick message from our sponsor. This episode of Man's Guide is sponsored by War Thunder, the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made. War Thunder puts you smack dab in the middle of dynamic, combined arms PvP battles with more than 2,000 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships to choose from. 2,000! And it seems like they nailed the quality as well as quantity too, because every vehicle just has an absurd level of detail, to the point where they're modeled down to their individual components. It all comes together in this awesome, immersive experience, featuring support for 4K resolution, authentic sound effects, great music. Actually, back up, I was especially impressed by the sound design. Hang on, this actually sounds really good. You wanna hear something even better? Sure, what? What was that? Since, to be honest with you, I never really got around to playing War Thunder until now, since I always thought it just wasn't my type of game. You know, one of those, like, hyper-competitive realism simulator type deals. And to be fair, it can be that if you want it to be, but War Thunder also offers arcade battles, where things are simpler, faster, and more action-packed. There's actually three levels, arcade, realistic, and simulator, so no matter what type of player you are, War Thunder's got you covered. They even have silly events sometimes, like racing and... Tank football? Wait, what? <laughs> and for those of you still on the fence about this, you should probably know, it's also free. Plus, if you're a new player or returning after six months and you use the link in the description, you get this bonus pack with like tons of free stuff. Click that link and play War Thunder now for free on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox. Thanks again for sponsoring the video, y'all. Let's get right back to our feature presentation. All right, was that enough time? Are you good? I'm good. Go ahead. Okay, so right off the bat, the Huntsman actually has a range of damage where it outperforms the sniper rifle. Because the Huntsman charges up much faster than any rifle, it's a lot easier to deal with anyone who has between 151 and 360 health. This includes pyros, demos, soldiers, heavies, and actually every class in the game with overheal. Well, except heavies, but you know. For this reason, I actually kind of prefer the Huntsman when I'm dealing with any pocketed class. With heavies, sure, you can't one-shot them, but you can mostly just corner peek and get away with it just fine. And if they're not being pocketed, then it's even easier to deal with them. And it doesn't just charge faster, it starts charging sooner as well. See, when you charge a rifle shot, there's a small delay between when you scope in and when the damage buff starts building up. With the Huntsman, it starts charging immediately, as soon as you press mouse one. So the base crit damage for both of them is still 150 damage, but because of that instant charge, realistically you'll be starting more in the high 150s to 160s or so. A lot of people overlook this feature. Many snipers that I see equipping the Huntsman just use it like the classic, as in you charge up a shot all the way and then fire. But here's the thing, Unlike the classic, you don't actually have to charge up a shot all the way to land a headshot. You could fire midway through the charge, right after you clear the damage threshold that you need to take out the class that you're fighting, or you could just throw an arrow out without even charging it at all. Oh, spy behind you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was a shame. <laughs> Firing in a nutshell is just tapping mouse one instead of holding it, which lets you fire an arrow a lot faster than you'd otherwise be able to. When you shoot an uncharged shot like this, the firing arc is a lot more severe, meaning it'll be less effective at medium and far range. But that arc really isn't as big of a deal when someone is right up in your face. So if you're getting rushed down by a light class or a flanker, it's usually a good option to just aim slightly above where you normally would and tap fire. In this clip, I'm walking down a tight corridor on Dust Bowl and oh no, oh, the hey. scout comes around the corner and surprises me. So what do I do? I just aim slightly above where I normally normally would, tap mouse one, and boom! In this clip I body shot this pyro and I'm pretty sure he's gonna follow me back to spawn after a second, so I go back here, stop for a second, go back up, aim slightly up, and then boom! Here's a clip where a scout flanks me and gets right up in my face, but that's okay because I'm using the Huntsman and I just, yeah. 
Oh, and here's the pyro. Yeah, okay. I deserve this. Oh, but wait, here's the second Huntsman Sniper with a steel chair! <laughs> and sometimes that art can even work in your favor, too. You can just lob arrows over map geometry and hit shots from places that you would never be able to with the stock rifle. This usually comes into play when you're fighting rifle snipers, but if you find a fun spot, you can just fire... and fire... and fire again... and fire again... And oh, hey, we hit somebody and fire again. And just, you just keep going. It's great. Yet another quirk with how charging works on the Huntsman is that you're a lot more mobile when you're doing it. Right off the bat, your movement speed is twice as fast when you're charging a Huntsman shot. But that's not even the best part. You can also start charging and fire while you're in the air. With the rifle, you can kind of do this if you drop off of something or get knocked into the air. Oh, because I'm a greedy... But if you actually hit the jump button, then you just can't scope. This restriction just isn't a thing with the Huntsman. So I often find myself jumping around and charging in midair to maintain my speed. Kind like a jump rev is heavy. And when you combine this with tap firing and just start bee hopping around and headshotting people, then you get some really ridiculous stuff. Yeah, sure, I'm probably biased, but playing an extremely mobile and aggressive sniper feels so much better than playing optimally with the rifle. And there's so much more to it too, like how well it pairs with all the SMGs, how the taunt kill has a legitimate use in stuffing Ubers, how the faster charge lets you deny bombs more easily with body shots. I, just, I honestly can't believe I'm saying this, but the Huntsman actually has legitimate tech that takes skill and practice to master. I know, I know, just hear me out. Sure, it's wacky and pretty situational, but when that situation presents itself and everything comes together, there is just absolutely nothing else like it. Wait, what? Are you fucking kidding me? Did we even see the same gameplay just now? I guess that's the real problem, isn't it? The Huntsman is so widely seen as this meme weapon that it's hard to actually get people to respect it. I mean, I'm no different. At the beginning of this video, I said it was effectively just a spammy slot machine. In many ways, it doesn't really matter how much tech the Huntsman has. You could hit a nice quick headshot after predicting someone's movement, or clean up a 1v1 with some clever movement of your own that baits them into chasing you around a blind corner, or even something as basic as a silly flick or a goddamn 360 headshot. In every single situation, no matter what the play was, someone's gonna complain about it. By picking this weapon, you're essentially sacrificing any respect that the other team has for you. When you really look closely at the Huntsman, through all the memes and jokes, all the jank and questionable hitboxes, despite what it looks like on the surface, this wacky, situational, statless mess of a weapon is not a comedy. It's a tragedy. It'll always be stuck in the sniper rifle shadow, even if it encourages a fun, fast-paced, more engaging playstyle. Even if it really does sometimes outperform the rifle. Because in the court of public opinion, it's still just the Luxman. No matter how good you get with it, you will never be more than a Luxman spammer. And that is truly tragic. You know what? No. If you're a real man co-mercenary, do whatever the fuck you want. Corner peak, camp choke points, or go crazy aggressive, do more 360s and shit. It doesn't matter. Nobody's opinion is gonna change anyway. Look, at the end of the day, nothing matters, life's short, and the Huntsman is fun. So go have fun with it, dude. And also spam down choke points on Dust Bowl, because let's be honest, it's gonna do basically the same thing. Once again, thanks to War Thunder for sponsoring the video and making this double feature possible. Again, if you're a new player or returning after six months and you use the link in the description or pinned comment, you get a bunch of free stuff. This bonus pack has multiple premium vehicles, a premium account, an exclusive 3D decorator for your vehicles, and much more. Seriously, it's worth your time and then some. Give it a shot. Yeah,